If you were to die and you leave your kids high and dry with nothing, there's a good feeling that comes to selling life insurance because you're not selling a risk, you're selling risk aversion. Thank you to our sponsors of the Inside Story Hunters podcast. A big shout out to Chad Hill of Term Provider, home of Big Lou. Tiffany Wondros, CNR Services. Michael Valletta of Quick Cuts Media. Don't forget to subscribe at youtube.com where you can follow our weekly episodes and get an automatic link to listen to our next guest sharing a part of their incredible inside story. So subscribe or listen on any podcast channel to your Inside Story Hunters podcast. Thanks for following us. Thanks for supporting us. Well, hello, insiders. It's Lori with the story here on Inside Story Hunters podcast. And I have the pleasure to interview Mike Paulzak, one of the managing partners of Term Provider, home of Big Lou. I All can't right. wait for you to tell the story about Big Lou. All right, me either. Let's yeah. chat. <laughs> Which I know you were so excited for me to interview you today, and I'm yeah. I'm exaggerating because yeah. <laughs> you're the man who likes to lay low, be yes, behind the scenes. Yes, ma'am. Except when we start talking water. Except when we talk about the water. I love the water. Okay. Yeah. So talk about all the activities that I've never done that I would be afraid to do. Has Jumping to do with right into the fun stuff. All yeah. right. Um, well, I don't know that you'd be afraid to do it. You just haven't tried to do it yet. But I'm a big, I'm an avid um, enthusiast of all things related to the water. Like to surf, like to fish, like to kite surf. Um, been in and out. I grew up on the water and haven't left it. I really enjoy it. And you're here, Fort Walton Beach. Fort Walton Beach. Term provider, home of Big Lou, is kind of a hidden secret. You're it a is. nationwide organization. Correct. Have grown exponentially since 2016. Correct. Have a few partners and have a bit of a family story. Indeed, all three of those. So, yeah. as I just jumped around to 15 things, I was hoping you might tell a little bit about your inside story. Like, who's Mike? Who's Mike? Who is Mike? Mike is a life insurance salesman. Well, you know, it, what I loved, what I've learned about the term provider team was the fact that you're advocates of people. And I said to you, let, let, talk about legacy, life insurance and preparing for the times when you're no longer here. And you had an incredibly unusual, you know, take on that. Mm -hmm. So how do you think of life insurance, you know, and why do you sell it? I mean, every day you wake up, that's your, one of your primary driven activities. You're, you're responsible for the, a big part of this in your company. Okay. Why? So you want the inside story. All right. So I, uh, when I graduated college in 2007, I came into the family business, which term provider was our family brokerage. My mother and father started it about 35 years ago. Wow. Um, Throughout my childhood, I was coming in and out of the office, licking envelopes, things of the sort. Um, moved off to school, had no interest in selling life insurance. Um, got a degree in finance, didn't really know what I was gonna do with it. Came in, gave it a shot in 2007, which was probably the worst time to start getting your feet wet wow. and selling life insurance, but kind of enjoyed it. And uh, paid the bills. And I ended up being pretty decent at being able to communicate and articulate life insurance to mm -hmm. clients. Mm -hmm. So um, got my feet wet for a few years and then we started to, um, well, I guess I got good at it and got good at, at selling and figuring, did, you know, understanding the different nuances to underwriting and life insurance and how to place cases with the right insurance company for the right for the individual mm -hmm. and um, that kind of uh, turned into us advertising towards the individuals that we felt were underserved in the market otherwise known as impaired impaired risk, impaired risk. so mm -hmm. people that have had a couple health hiccups in life I mean our average clients in their 50s 40s 50s 60s um, and the common things we come across are diabetes, heart issues, uh, cancer history, maybe some height and weight issues, I mean, strokes, clots, list goes on. But what we found was that um, most insurance agents wouldn't take the time to help a client figure out which insurance company would treat them the best. Mm -hmm. Right, there's 30 plus life insurance broker or insurance carriers out there, and every carrier has their own set of underwriting niches. And trying to figure out which carrier will treat you better than anyone else is a little bit of an art, and mm -hmm. that's the art that we kind of developed and have really excelled in. Mm -hmm. And that our our success in trying to underwrite impaired risk is what turned into the Big Lou commercials that you're currently hearing on the radio. Um, 
we've had a number of characters come through our office in the years and but uh one of the one of the original people that had got my father into the business 35 years ago was a gentleman by the name of Lou Lamana and um and we used to just say hey if you're on crazy meds call Lou because he's crazy too or, you know we used to give him you know Our wife number two yeah, yeah we yeah, bust his yeah. chops right we yeah. bust his chops and and that turned into call big Lou he's on meds too and so we kind of we took off with it and it it was the brainchild of a few of us but my father really had um had a lot to do with it he really he came up with a couple commercials he swore they would work and none of us believed them mm. but we enjoyed running them and um but they did they did work and so that's where the the origins of term provided the home of igloo come from um and along the way we've had a number of different agents and people involved in the business but currently chad hill and i are the um are the office managers within or within we're the managing partners within the fort walton beach office and we we ended up buying out my father a number of years back and taking on two partners in Pennsylvania who have uh, really helped with the underwriting side of the business and the processing of our business. Which makes you unique. You have an in-house underwriting support team. We do. Right? That's one of our keys to success is we have, uh, we have a phenomenal group that we've compiled. We've got a lot of great agents, a lot of really educated case managers. Uh, most of the staff, not just the agents, but even most of the staff has license has, has an insurance license. They know what they're doing. They've passed testing. Um, our underwriting, I think, cannot be beat because mm -hmm. we have access to all the carriers, and we really just we dig right into the uh, reinsurance manuals to figure out which insurance companies can be better for you mm -hmm. or for you or for anyone else. I mean, we mm -hmm. we can go in and, and literally isolate the number one carrier, um, and we you know we've had great success with uh, with the Marcus Agency in Pennsylvania. Who does all of our our business and they enjoyed the business decided to come in on it with us and um and the rest is history here we are something though you know i, I, I didn't want to jump in right away but when you said i'm a life insurance agent you made sure to tell me you don't sell yet that's what you do day yeah. in and, and and on the phone which is unique but you know, and you love that being behind the scenes, right? Being yeah. able to just dial and smile, but you're not. The people are reaching out to you, but you don't sell life insurance. What What's your perspective on it? Um, my perspective is that the the applicants or the people that I talk with on a daily basis have made the initial request. They've heard an ad, they've seen an ad, they've they know they need life insurance. They're coming to me because they know they need it. Mm -hmm. It's not that I have to sell it to them. Mm -hmm. It's I have to help them figure out how much they can afford, which insurance company to go to. And I really, I know that I am a life insurance salesman per se, mm -hmm. but I don't find myself to be a salesman in the true sense of the word. I'm not, I'm not forced to, um, forced to meet a quota. I'm not forced to get X amount of cases per month. What I really enjoy is finding out each and in, each individual's needs, who they're trying to protect, protect their family. Mm -hmm. And then the only thing that I do is I, I, isolate where to go and what the price will be. And the client gets to decide whether that's right for them or not. I can't decide their budget mm -hmm. and their pain tolerance, but I, I very rarely have to sell it. Mm -hmm. It is usually they know they need it. Mm -hmm. They find it to be a, a critical part of their estate planning or their legacy. And they come to me because they have a need and I'm there presenting the solution. And it's, you don't often have to sell a, a solution. You know, they know what the solution will be and they just want to know the price and then they have to find someone that can actually get it done for them. And that turns into me. Well, it, I, I think anyone looking, the insiders looking at you now, they would say, okay, he's a young man. Does he really have to focus on life insurance right now? I know something about your inside story yeah. that if you're comfortable to elaborate, that has to do with your health that makes you not only relatable, but I think that you can speak from personal experience that when's the right time to get life insurance? When you need it? Today. Or... Today. Never wait. Um, so yeah, you're, you're, you know, the, the gist of it is, is that I was diagnosed last year with three brain tumors. None of them cancerous, yeah. fortunately, but um, lost a bit of hearing in an ear and was noticing a few things, had to go get an MRI, and then you get the unfortunate diagnosis of, hey, you've got not one, not two, but three brain wow. tumors. And, um, you know, it was a interesting year to say the least, but one of the things that I had always circled back to was that, oh, thank goodness I've done something right in my life. I already got my insurance squared away. Mm -hmm. And the year prior I'd uh, 
purchased 30 years of term life insurance. I had purchased some disability life insurance or disability insurance. And so I had my, my insurance portfolio more or less in good order, which was quite fortunate because, you know, a year or two years later, I'm diagnosed with something like brain tumors, which the second an insurance company hears, oh, you've got active brain tumors. They don't want to write life insurance on you. What, what does um, someone do? What does someone do at that point? Yeah. Well, you hope they don't change and you hope you can get insurance down the road. Um, but for, you know, less dire scenarios, most of the time, you know, your diabetics, your heart issues, you've had a stint, you've had prostate cancer and had it removed and successfully treated, or you're, you're five years out, 10 years out from breast cancer, um, you can get life insurance. Mm-hmm. And it's important that I help people find the insurance when the time is right, mm-hmm. which is really part of what we do in our job is we set the stage for appropriate expectations, timelines, um, what levels need to be. So a lot of my role as a salesman is really as a life coach or a wellness coach. Yeah, um, you're educating. You're educating people on how an insurance company is going to view their specific health condition and when that condition or what form of that condition they need to be focused on or their control levels in order to obtain a better rate or a rate whatsoever, a rate at all. Mm-hmm. Um, but. It is, it is important to try and get your life insurance sooner than later. And the sooner is because you don't know what tomorrow holds. How about and if I was 20? If you're 20, you can get it. Start. Mm-hmm. Most people, I'd say the, the smart age is once you've started either you've gotten married, you have some sort of uh, financial obligations that you're sharing with a spouse, a partner, mm-hmm. um, you're going into business and you, you, you and your partners need to protect each other. Um, there's no wrong age to buy life insurance. It, you. Most people when they're 18 years old don't want to spend $100 a month or even $5 a month on something so mm-hmm. far down the road as, uh, mm-hmm. as passing away. Mm-hmm. But as soon as you start to have some financial responsibilities, you have a spouse that depends on you, you have children that depend on you, the time is now, right? Mm-hmm. Is it, so you know, your, your average, usually your 30s is when people really start to look at life insurance, which is an appropriate age. I mean, you can, some people in their 20s start young, mm-hmm. um, but generally, you know, by the time you're in your 30s, you should be seriously considering your life insurance portfolio. Let's dig into you're an owner, you're a partner, uh-huh. right? And you have multiple business partners, mm-hmm. you're second generation, so it's a multi-generational business. Yep. You, you have other family members, you know, uncles and so forth. What's it like to be working in a family business? It's a roller coaster. <laughs> Oh, it's not easy and simple. <laughs> it can be. It can yeah. be. But no, it's it's nothing's easy. Um, it's fun. It's. I mean, I've always enjoyed working with my family. I have a good working relationship with my family. I have a good relationship with my mother and my father, both of whom were in the business for a number of years. Um, my uncle and my aunt work with us. Love them dearly. It's fun seeing family every day. Mm-hmm. Um, my siblings have no interest in the business. I was the one that had an interest, so here I am. But the... Uh, the day-to-day is, is normal. I mean, I'd rather see people that I know and love than strangers that become family, though everyone in this office really is like a family. Oh, it uh, is. The culture is unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, we've had... I mean, I had the pleasure to actually interview every single one of your team members, 29 to be exact, mm-hmm. and your business partner, Chad, the two of you, the way that your people speak about both of you is people first, internally first, and then you're loving on your your prospects and walking and hold and makes you so unique. Well, we paid them to say that. <laughs> well, you did well because I mean it. It was just it was a breath of fresh air. And yeah, we try. I mean, we care about everyone here. I've known most of these people half my life, right? I mean, I've, mm-hmm. I've been in and out of this office since I was in my teens, and there's mm-hmm. several people that have been here for longer than I have. Mm-hmm. And so it's um, I mean, it's it's our office family. We see them, you know, we see each other more than we see most of our own families mm-hmm. for the most part. And uh, we really, I enjoy it. Mm-hmm. I enjoy it yeah. So your father and your mom, really, yeah. you know, they birthed this, right? What would they say about the early days? What was it like for them? Did Could they have ever imagined what was going to happen multi-generational, years later, uh, on, on a trajectory to grow unbelievable? I mean... Yeah, I, I don't know that they would have ever expected it or not. I mean, my father came from tough beginnings and he's always excelled. He's, he's worked hard. He's always found a way to make a living. Um, my mother was a was a, a doctor in Canada, wow. but then she stopped practicing when she moved to the States. Um, they raised us to work hard, try hard, and they always cared about education. And I don't think they ever saw me coming into the business. I don't think they saw the other, the other siblings coming into the business, but um, they welcomed it. And I think today they're, they're probably grateful for it. I mean, I really do. It's, you know, my father's, my parents are no longer actively in the business on a day-to-day basis, but they still, um, 
they're, they're always around, you know, mm-hmm. and, and I think they value having us here. And I think that they value not having to still do it themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where's term provider home of Bigaloo going in the next couple of years? To the moon. <laughs> <laughs> um, in terms of what? I mean, in terms of growth. Absolutely. Are you hiring? Always. Always. Yeah. And if so, if I were interested in becoming part of the sales team or you have a powerhouse uh, administrative team mm-hmm. also, um, so or processors and underwriting, so what would that look like? Um, in terms of hiring, we're always looking for a qualified agent. When it comes to, to selling life insurance for a living, uh, experience helps. Um, we're generally not looking to start somebody from the bit bottom all the way up. When it comes to the agents, we look for someone that's at least had a little bit of seasoning in the industry, people that are familiar with underwriting, with the terminology, with different insurance carriers. Um, we, all, we do have a training program. We can, we can teach people how to underwrite the way that we handle our business, which mm-hmm. is unique in the mm-hmm. industry. Um, so there is definitely always going to be a learning curve to the underwriting aspect of it. But when it comes to... Uh, basic fundamentals of insurance, having a license, having your state accreditation is important. Um, And then it's really call. We'll see if it's a fit. And I don't know if it's for everyone. And we realize everyone learns at a different level. But it was my understanding, learning more through your people, through your sales team, that two years is realistic for an agent to really get in the groove, to understand. And because there's such a demand of them, they're looking at medical records. They're interacting and it is a matter of life and death, literally. It can be, yeah, but it it really is. It's an involved business. I mean, you have to understand medicine, you have to understand health conditions, you have to understand the nuances to health conditions, the medications that go into it. Um, For example, on a cardiac front, if people have had a cardiac stint, you have to understand echocardiograms, stress test results, whether they're still on blood thinners. You have to be able to go in and a lot of it, you have to be able to know what to look for mm-hmm. in order to elicit the information that an insurance underwriter would want to see. And you have to be able to extrapolate it, interpret it, send it off to an underwriter, allow them to interpret it, and then figure out how to regurgitate it to a client. Mm-hmm. So um, having a, a basic fundamental understanding of how medicine works is important. And um, I forgot the other part of your question. Well, it's just a matter of the you know to to ramp up the two years, the the learning yes. the learning curve, right? It is a it is a slow learning curve. It takes two years. Um, two years, I think, is the minimum for a, an agent that knows what they're doing in insurance to come in and flourish. Mm-hmm. Okay, it can be a little bit longer if you're if you're a rookie. Mm-hmm. All right, mm-hmm. um, and it's just because there are so many different carriers, different scenarios, crediting programs, health programs. Um, different products for different people depending on what they're trying to accomplish Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that it's it it just you have to get your feet wet to learn it all there's no there's no instruction manual for everything right Right. and you have to start to just I guess learn how to do it on your own a little bit I mean we provide the feedback we we are a a resource for all of our agents any case that comes through um, somebody's willing to dig in and get their hands dirty even though it's not their particular case or their personal case Um, but you have to be able to think outside of the box Mm-hmm. regularly right. figuring out hey if this guy is has a, this condition one what can he do with his doctor ahead of us applying for insurance to try and improve his odds at a lower price point i love that when mm-hmm. i listen to some of your team members said okay if you lose 11 pounds mm-hmm. and you come back in 60 days mm-hmm. and then you know some of these adjustments health changes diet whatever that you know if you can hold out 90 days we're going to be in a better position on your behalf. Absolutely. When there's plenty of insurance companies that would have just said, fill out the application, let's make this happen and close the transaction. Absolutely. I mean, uh, five pounds and two tenths of a percentage on a hemoglobin A1C can make a 35% difference in price when it comes to your life insurance. That's unbelievable. And being able to articulate that correctly and let people know where they need to be, what their benchmark should be in order to get a lower rate makes all of the difference. Because you would say that your people are not here to sell based on how much can I sell to you. Correct. It is providing the right product or service. Don't let me put the words in your mouth, but the right product and service to care for the individual that has reached out to you for life insurance. Absolutely. I mean, we are here to sell life insurance. That is Mm -hmm. the ultimate goal. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. That's what pays the bills. But selling life insurance is the easy part. I mean, you can get anybody. I mean, if somebody needs life insurance and you show them a good price, they'll say yes, and you get a chance at selling them. But it's really about, can I get a policy approved that you are able to tolerate, mm-hmm. right? Because 
I could sell you something for a thousand bucks a month, but if you can only afford 200 a month, it's irrelevant. Okay. Yes. So it's very much about making sure that what we're doing is appropriate for the client's needs, mm -hmm. that it's within their budget. And that if the, if, I mean, if it's not going to work out, letting them know that it's not going to work out, right. right? Setting a real, a realistic expectation for, for this is how you will protect your family. Here's what you can do to make it a little bit cheaper on yourself, or here's what I can do today. But, um, really trying to dig in on the health side to make sure that we can find a viable policy for a client. So I ask every guest on my podcast, right? May you live to be 300 years old Absolutely. and you're here forever and ever and ever. Um, but your time's going to come just Absolutely. like the rest of us and your legacy, your footprint. What does that look like? How do you want us to remember you? Um, How do I want to be remembered? Um, you know, personally, I'm not much for remembrance, you know, like I, I like to slide under the radar a little bit. I like to live my life. I find a lot of joy and happiness in the time I spend with my wife. I love to be out on the water. Don't I like, forget Tuna. Yeah, my what dog, my beautiful dog, dog Tuna. Um, so in terms of, I like our business to be remembered as a, a resource for people that thought they couldn't get insurance, right? Mm -hmm. Or a resource for people that had a policy that they thought they'd never be able to beat again. But in terms of what I really like, I mean, I sleep well at night because every time you write a life insurance policy, you're helping provide for somebody's worst case scenario, mm -hmm. right? If you were to die and you leave your kids high and dry with nothing or your spouse with nothing and she's stuck with the mortgage, with the bills, if she's stuck with three car payments, the kids tuition, um, the products that we sell cover that. And that is really, it's, there's a good feeling that comes to selling life insurance because you're not selling a risk. You're selling risk aversion. Mm, um, well I'm not, said. I love I'm, that quote. Yeah, so I'm, you're not selling a risk. You're selling a risk aversion. Correct. I mean, living is risky, right? Buying a home is risky. Having kids is risky. Um, caring for your family inherently carries risk. Yes. Okay. And none of us are going to make it out of life free, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, there's a cost to everything we do. But the worst thing that can happen is you pass away without a plan. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you have children, if you have an estate, if you have Bills, a, business. a business. I mean, mm -hmm. you need to make sure that the at the end of the day, at least you cover your minimum nut. You make sure that the spouse, the surviving spouse, has enough to stay in the home for at least enough time to figure out if they're going to sell the home and downsize right. or move somewhere else. Making sure that if your kids are in school and that you're covering those college costs, um, they still have the funds to finish their schooling. They're not, you know, yes. and not everybody's fortunate enough to have uh, have their college paid for by their parents, but. In that sense, you know, you've got kids going off to college that are racking up a ton of debt. If you can, if, if, if you were to pass and you can leave something to help cover a little yes. bit of that, that's important. Right? Yes. But primarily what we sell is protection. It's mm -hmm. protection against the worst case scenario. And I mean, it's inevitable. We all, we all are going to die, period. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just a matter of when, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So it's nice to know that no matter when the time is, you're covered. You have the insurance, right? It, it allows you to sleep easier. And in selling products that provide that level of protection, I sleep easier. It's a guaranteed product. You know, nobody can take it away from you once you've qualified for it. And it's a, it's, it's a product that doesn't need much introduction, but that is also not as, I guess people don't think about it as being as important as it actually is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Some people really know that insurance is important, but other people put it on the back burner for a long time and they women. Wait. Yeah. Women, men. I mean, a lot of people put it on the back burner when you have a million other things to do in life, which mm -hmm. is completely, I mean, even myself, it took me, I mean, I was in the business 10 years before I finally got all my ducks in a row. Mm -hmm. Right. And when I did it, I was really, it's, it's a nice sense of uh, reassurance. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I remember taking a step to have a will, yeah. you know, uh, raising my, my sons alone. And, and the reality, I didn't know how happy it would make me. Yeah, I had a plan. Yeah. It was a matter of, you know, did, having a plan, life insurance, proacting, God forbid you didn't do those steps. Mm -hmm. And here you are. And if you had four kids at home and your wife and, and two, Tuna, the dog, and all, and next thing you know, there you are diagnosed with brain tumors. Yep. That's, that's, it's difficult. You have one of your agents who shared with me that what really drives his success was the fact that his own family, he had an immediate family member pass away. Mm -hmm. They had no funeral arrangements in place. Mm -hmm. They, the immediate family who was going to have to move out of a home. I mean, you're mourning and there you are over the next week, not only crying for the loss of a loved one, but your, your entire life's in turmoil. Absolutely. And how unbelievably difficult that is. It and is. the decisions that get made that are probably not responsible ones because 
you're not in a mind of clarity. Correct. Yep. Dying is expensive. Dying is very expensive. I mean, your average funeral cost well over twenty five thousand wow. dollars. Um, so not having a plan can leave your family truly strapped. Right. Mm -hmm. And there is I've I've spoke with countless grieving spouses that said they lost the love of their life. But thank God for the life insurance because it allowed them just to grieve, yes. right? You're not worried about where's the next bill, where's the next paycheck going to come from. You you have the money. The money is no yes. longer the issue. The mm -hmm. money is there. It's in a bank account. It was issued tax free. Mm -hmm. It's that now that allowed you the time to personally go back, reflect, grieve, and learn how to make a new life without the one you loved. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the life insurance is an important tool to allow that person that that freedom. Well, I just think there was so much that you're, you're an educator and the fact that you quote, quoted yourself as a life coach, that's what life insurance health is. Health coach. You know? <laughs> a health coach. Yes. A life coach. But I wanted, I mentioned woman. I just blurted that out because the more that I learned about term provider, home of Big Lou, and even I come from an, uh, an insurance family. Yep. My father's a, re a retired Allstate agent. Yep. For 10 years, I uh, was licensed as a property and casualty agent. Yep. Life and health was that little extra, just yep. came with the license. Yep. I didn't go down that path, but my father did, whole life term. But bringing that all about, being around insurance, it was always the what if. You yep. prepare for the what if. Yeah. Um, but to, to women, I still think there's so many women that think it, you know, that it's the it's the husband, it's the it's the breadwinner. Um, more, you know, more families have two two dual income, yeah. but women are not um, don't go about life insurance the same way. They don't. They don't. Um, and I don't know why that is. I mean, a lot of it, it for a long time, it was a heavily male dominated industry. Um, most of your insurance salesmen are going to be men. Um, and traditionally in the old fashioned household where the male was the primary breadwinner, there was an emphasis on the primary breadwinner should be insured more, I guess, more critically than the, the stay at home bread and non breadwinner. Right? Seems to make sense. Right. Yeah. So the, I mean, in, in your traditional roles, it did make sense, but today's day and age, everybody's a dual income family for mm -hmm. the most part. Yes. And it doesn't matter whether it's a dual income or not. Um, I think that the cost of trying to replace a stay-at-home mom or stay-at-home a dad is astronomical. People don't realize how expensive it is to stay at home or what it would cost to replace somebody to watch your children, take care of your children, bring them to school, yes. do the do the regular household mm -hmm. uh, activities, you yes. know, replacing cleaning, replacing um, the bookkeeping. A lot mm -hmm. of times the non-working spouse does a lot of the bookkeeping. Those are tasks that you can't just pick up and easily replace. Sure. And hiring people to do that is expensive. Sure. Okay. Nonetheless, the, or, you know, not to discount the, the working spouse, but the working spouse losing their, pri their partner, right? It's, um, it's tragic, right? Mm -hmm. You don't just hop up and lose your love, your wife, or you lose your husband and go right back to work as if everything is totally okay. Um, that can really take a financial hit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Me in sales, if I lost my wife, I would be, I don't know that I'd be able to pop right back in here. I mean, it would take me a while before I had the energy, the will, the drive to go back and have a normal uh, work life. Because right? you're working for the yeah. two of you. You're, you're working for team. the two of us. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But I mean, not only is she my best friend and my wife, I mean, I love her to death. So I don't think I'd be able to come back in and have my head together. I mean, mm -hmm. it, would, it would, I would take a, a huge hit. And mm -hmm. I think it's uh, equally important for, in a, a in a marriage for both spouses to be insured generally for very similar amounts mm -hmm. okay and because no matter what you do you're you're sharing a household i mean if you own a home that's a joint that's a joint loan a joint piece of debt okay mm -hmm. doesn't matter whether it's the working spouse or the non-working spouse and or if you're both working you don't you are counting on dual incomes you are counting on dual incomes to get into that home you purchased so without one of those incomes that mortgage remains the same sure you need you need to cover it yeah. Well, and I mean, it's just everything you're talking about, whether it's male, woman, it's it's the reality of life insurance. I wonder why it's not taught in high school and college as part of like, you know, we used to have to learn how to balance a checkbook. So, I mean, my sons, you know, to write a check was a fascinating thing to show them how to fill out a check, right? <laughs> there was no Venmo, yeah, you know, yeah, PayPal, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, let me, I don't know, cyberspace you a million dollars. But... Why is not not part of our education on preparing for a healthy future? You know, I don't think many 12 year olds are going to be interested in life insurance, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Good point. Um, but it's, 
no, I think it's something that you do have to really start to consider as you come into adulthood. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of people do know about it. I think it's a very well-known topic. It's just not a fun topic. Mm -hmm. Nobody enjoys thinking about how much money do I need to spend a month to protect myself in case I'm dead. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's a lot of other priorities that seem to fill in first. Yes. Right. Um, but it doesn't mean that people don't think about it. And people do. I mean, our phones are always flooded with phone calls. People are thinking about life insurance. It's it's not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when they call. Mm -hmm. And the more people that know that they can call, get information, it's not always just a sales game. It's not about pushing them through a funnel. It's about understanding their particular need, trying to help them understand what they're even trying to do. A lot of people aren't sure what they should do. Mm -hmm. So having a conversation about, hey, here are some income multiples. Let's talk about what how much money you owe. Let's talk about your health. Let me at least present to you what I think is a solution that would um, that would provide that protection. Mm -hmm. Okay, and for anybody that calls, they they usually will get the same amount of uh, treatment from anyone, right? Like I mean, every one of our agents wants to help people understand um, the products, wants to understand more about what they're trying to do, and they ultimately want to try to find a way to help them because that's what our livelihood depends on. Yes, um, but it's also uh, it's truly a vital part of any sort of financial picture. One of the other big uniques about term provider, Home of Big Lou, is that you really, as a goal, as a team, is do not close a sale on the first interaction. Absolutely not. It's like dating. Like, don't go on the first date and put a ring on someone's finger mm -hmm. and call it lifelong. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I, I think that's really ironic in such a positive way yeah. to encourage your people to say, build a relationship. Build a rapport. Um, I think that... First calls are like speed dating. Mm -hmm. You're never going to find out the worst, right? You're only going to find out <laughs> what people behavior. want to tell you. Yeah. And, and everybody is scared to relay their um, their own personal health history. You know, you got people that occasionally use tobacco. You got people that um, don't really want to tell you about the heart stint they had five mm -hmm. years ago. They think it's not an issue because now they're in feeling great, right? But it is it is relevant. But then you, you have to really dig in and, and try to understand um, people's lifestyles because the lifestyle is part of buying life insurance. I mean, your driving history, your financial history, wow. your um, you know, recreational drug use, you know. Today, the gummy bears. Yeah. I heard just a funny story where people didn't even know that like you, this could affect your test. Absolutely. If you, you know? eat a couple of those edibles, I mean, uh, recreational marijuana or medical marijuana, medicinal marijuana is huge in a lot of states now. Um, it's becoming relevant and insurance companies don't penalize for it unless it's not disclosed. So trying to build a rapport with a stranger about what's your recreational drug use, um, people have <laughs> reservations with that, right? Well, understandably, yeah. Yeah. okay? But yeah. also, you know, you, you talk to uh, to people who are sensitive about their weight and trying to understand, hey, what's your actual weight? Is 200 really what you weigh or is 200 what you want to weigh, right? Mm -hmm. So trying to get factual information generally takes a little bit of a rapport. And also just trying to get a better understanding. I think that most people call and expect a 10 minute phone call and you can do a lot in 10 minutes, but you can't do everything in 10 minutes and you can't um, try to lay out a educated proposal in a five to 10 minute phone call. You need a little bit of rapport building. You need to make sure that what you're selling the client is appropriate for them. You need to make sure to have time to do your homework because quoting life insurance, while it's easy to give a number, it's difficult to give an accurate number. And there's a lot of homework that goes into it. You need to cross check different underwriting manuals. You need to make sure, see which carriers are currently a player for each health condition. And you need to make sure that you are just, you're taking the big picture into consideration. So you're talking about the, the a prospect. It doesn't have to know how to do or navigate any of this. They They're don't. showing up to the expert on a phone call. They call, they call, which is the beauty of it. I like to fly on under the radar and I don't have to meet anybody face to face. You can have an anonymous phone call with a guy named Mike or any one of our other agents and you can say, hey, I'm, I mean, I get people to give me the wrong name and I'll go, I'll call them the wrong name for the first three months and they tell me their name is really something different. I'm like, well, all right. Well, John, it's nice to meet you, Jim. Um, so, yeah, but, but yeah, you can have a conversation that's off the record. I mean, none of our phone calls are recorded. We're not, we're not submitting information in any sort of hidden database. It's not automated. Yeah, you're not passing me off to hit five for this yeah. or whatever. No, you're calling a guy saying, hey, I have a problem or I have a need and you've got somebody that wants to talk to you about it, right? Mm -hmm. And we, we do the best that we can over the phone. We do our homework. We come back. We present proposals. Um, allow you all the time you need to consider it. Nobody's jamming it down your throat. We don't call 50 times in a week. Um, I'm very much a hurry up and wait kind of guy. I like to 
hurry up, have a conversation here, I can help, do my little bit of work, put that information in your hands, and then patiently wait on you to, to get back in touch. I mean, maybe call once every other week or reach out if I haven't heard from you in a month, but it's very much a process that I know you need it, I know you'll eventually buy it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Whenever that time is, I want to be the guy that gave you all of the little bits of information that made you say, I'm going to call that guy back because he knew his stuff. Mm -hmm. He had a solution and it sounded like he cared and he didn't bug me to no end. Insiders are listening. Somebody's, you know, they really weigh 273 pounds. They've been un uncomfortable to say anything. They think they're, you know, a high risk. I mean, we're all big losing in a way. Absolutely. Especially when we reach an age where when we start looking for life insurance, I think when, rather than the proactive steps you did, thank God you did, right? Yep. yep. But, you know, so how do we contact you? How do you contact me? Give us a phone call. So you want to know how to contact me directly or? Sure, you so, tell us. Easiest place to start your quote, uh, search is biglou.com. Simple. So, www.biglou.com. Otherwise known like the little, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, our website, you can go in and enter your basic details, your name, your phone number, your email address, and your date of birth, and we'll get in touch. Mm -hmm. um, you can call us 800-955-9211, ask to speak with an agent. Uh, you can call me directly. 850-818-8809. I like to sell life insurance. Say it again yeah. one more time. Yep. 850-818-8809. Awesome. My direct line. Um, so, and, and really, the best thing to do is have a phone conversation, right? I always tell people, I need five minutes. Give me five because you can elicit so much more information over the phone than you can via email. And I'm really a call me guy. Like, right. I want to know your problems, but I can't spend 25 minutes crafting a polite email. I need to, you know, I need to just yeah. call you, take two minutes, find out what this med's for and move on. Right. Yeah. And because it is a volume game, I mean, we're dealing with a lot of inquiries. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you, you've you can, grown by millions. I mean, I mean, it really yes. through the years. Yeah, in terms of dollars, yes. Right. But in terms of, I mean, you, our agents are juggling two hundred different people at any given time, right? Uh, and so you have to be able to just, we got to get straight to it, right? And I'm a straight to it kind of guy. I'm like, hey, you know, I, I like to build a little bit of a rapport to understand what I can do to help you. But you know, people's grandkids. If you want to talk about the grandkids, I'm probably not your guy. You know, I'll tell you what the weather's like, and that's fine. But what I really want to know is what's your A1C. You know, what's your health history? Let me know how I can help you. And I want to get you those details because mm -hmm. this is a, um, it's, well, it's just, it's an important part of people's planning and people think that they can only buy it from the local guy down the street, which mm -hmm. is really not the truth. I mean, mm -hmm. and you certainly can build a relationship and I, I've got a lot of clients that I've really enjoyed working with and gotten to know over the years, but I'd say a majority of people are looking for a solution and they're not looking for a friend. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and I respect that because time is money. And this is something that people don't have enough of in today's day and age. It's a busy day. And well age, said. Right. And the and small talk's great if you want it. Correct. But and, most and, of us are yeah. welcoming. Like, let's get to it. Yeah, let's get let's to it. I, mean, stop and I have clients that I've known for 15 years and I love hearing from them. I really do. Like, I enjoy building a rapport with people that want to have mm -hmm. the rapport. Um, but most people are looking for a down and dirty number. Right. Yeah. Like, let's get down to let's get down to business. Right. And, and I'm a, I love that. It's like, tell me who you are. I'll tell you what I can do. I'll tell you where you need to be and I'll give you a number. Right. right? And, and I can and do that efficiently. don't the key five details of, to yeah. your point, like be transparent, be yeah, vulnerable. Absolutely. And transparency is key in terms of us doing an accurate job up front, but we have a lot of um, other measures that we use to try and help people along the way. Okay, mm -hmm. because to ask somebody their entire life's history at 65 years old, that's 65 years of life. You're not wow, going to remember every little detail. Mm -hmm. Okay, but so most of our process starts with the initial inquiry and the little things like a thyroid medication or a blood pressure medication, they're really not that relevant. I mean, mm -hmm. they're important to know that you're on medication for things, but insurance companies mostly can, uh, they mostly care that levels are controlled. Okay, mm -hmm. but then you get into a little bit more complicated things. People had unusual surgeries 10 years ago, or people have have um, you know drug and alcohol histories mm -hmm. people have yeah. felony histories in their background you know they did something they regret 30 years ago unfortunately those can come back to light and it applies with and it does insurance. apply right it's it's like have you ever is kind of how they phrase the questions is have you ever a through Z right and so uh, you know bankruptcies come into play um, so it's important that that you build a little bit of that conversation with clients just to understand um, how you can help because the you know felony histories are relevant but hey if restitution's paid and you're 
10 years out of it and it's you know it's no longer even on your record it's not a problem but there are certain companies that really specialize in that and mm -hmm. can help people that have had complicated backgrounds that's why you all yeah. welcome you need an impaired risk it's so, not all of your clients and that's why there's no one-size-fits-all questionnaire conversation right because mm -hmm. most people would say ah, felonies no I've never had one of those don't even, why would you even ask me and then you've got somebody else who says hey you know what I've been running a successful business for 25 years but prior to then I spent five years in jail for manslaughter Wow. Okay, or yeah. you know, ten years in prison for involuntary manslaughter, and you're like, that becomes part of it. And no two people are identical, mm -hmm. right? In health and lifestyle and in, in wealth, so, so you, you really have to have a couple conversations to make sure you capture everything, mm -hmm. um, which is part of the fun of it. Okay, but in terms of applying for the insurance, I mean, most of the time it's about your health, mm -hmm. and when it comes to the health, I mean, we present initial numbers. There's never any money with it. We do an insurance exam most of the time, which is required by insurance carriers. They check your height, your weight, your blood, and your urine. Um, and that's where we stop. We always take a pause. So we do our insurance exams first because we can use one exam in any insurance company, which is unique, okay? So we do one physical that covers all of the bases, and then we pull the results. We check your exact height and weight. We look at what was your blood pressure. We mm. pull the blood results, show you how to get a copy of them. You, we pull it, we look at it. We see what your levels of control are. Um, there's been many instances where we found things people were unaware of. Um, really common, prostate cancer or prostate issues. Oh my goodness. You see men say all of a sudden, hey, their, their prostate levels have spiked. Are you even aware of this? No, I wasn't aware of it. You actually should Get probably to go to your doctor, right? Mm -hmm. Or I've had examiners call me and say, hey, I just did an EKG on a guy and it looked really bad. I've never called before, but his EKG was highly unusual. I think he needs to go to a cardiologist. I called that wife right back let her know that her husband's EKG was really unusual. We fax it to his doctor's office and two days later he had a quadruple bypass that saved oh his life. Oh my God. So, but we, you know, those are life changers. Right? They're life, life changers, savers. right? But we, we start, we do an exam and we look at it and we simply analyze it and say, based on this exam, here's where we should go. We pick the carrier that's right for people. We get them through the process. We kind of hold their hands. It's very much a hurry up and wait thing. It's not, it's not a tremendous amount of work on the client end. It's a lot of the work falls back on our shoulders yes. in terms of obtaining medical records, obtaining the releases, reviewing them, uh, kind of going back and forth with underwriters, pushing for better approvals. And um, you know, two months later, you get a policy, you get approved, or you, know, you get some gyration of, a, of an offer. And it's... Um, eight weeks is what yeah, I'm eight hearing. Eight weeks is, is the average point? turnaround time start to finish. You know, and that, that, that isn't including the time it took to get a person to say, yes, I want to apply, mm -hmm. right? So you can have a phone call and yes, we can apply same day. Um, you can buy life insurance on the first phone call, contrary to, to, to our popular sure. motto. But we think that it's one of those products that people don't buy just because, right? Mm -hmm. If you need life insurance, most of the time it took you two years just to make the first phone call. It's okay if it takes a couple more weeks for you to review your options, even have time to formulate your questions on what you're buying. Yes. Talk with the agent. Feel an explanation to, to yeah. trust you. Yeah, to, tr to trust me or to trust the product or even know what to ask, mm -hmm. right? And so we try to be there as a resource to, to kind of hold people's hands through the process. Um, but it, it all starts with making a phone call and getting in touch with us. Yeah. Yeah. So why don't you tell the insiders one more time your direct phone number? Because you sound oh, like goodness. a commercial. You're uh, like Big Lou with a smile. Yeah, you know? Big Lou. 850-818-8809. I love it. Yeah. You know, I just thank you for the way yeah, that you, you support people. Yeah. You care for them. And you are really someone who looks for the details. Yes. I mean, you just described about saving lives. Yeah. Yeah. And if they hadn't reached out to inquire about life insurance and do it proactively, not after the fact, yeah. not when yeah. you need it. Well, most people don't think that they need it until they've had a life event that kind of shocks them, right? Yes. Like it takes something to make you feel mortal, yes. right? Yes. And um, none of us are immortal, but it's important to try and get some life insurance before you've had a big, you know, a big sticker shock, right? Mm -hmm. Before the doc said, hey, that heart test didn't go so good, okay? Mm -hmm. um, but... Even then, if, it, if it's treatable, it's probably insurable down the road. And there's still a solution. You're here with yeah, us, right? Absolutely. So, term provider, home of Big Lou, I'm based out in Fort Walton Beach, Florida, but that's a little bit of a secret that I keep yeah, unveiling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, it's you know. pretty awesome out here. Don't let everybody know. You know. And there might be some pictures to be looking out for of oh, Mike yes, kite yes, surfing, yes, yes. which uh, sounds like a lot of fun. It's a blast. It's, a, awesome. it's great. Well, thank you for being here today. You're welcome. All right, insiders. Thanks oh, so much. It. All right. All right. Thank you. you. Bye. Bye for now.